Sobre mandala baso prande le besu tala. Rabandala la 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 ka prande le besu tobe ya la la baso. Rabandala baso prande le le ki ya la la baso tobe la la. Kala bando proso tobe la la bando le ki ya la la bando proso la la. Rabanda proso rabande le ki si ya la la. Rabande le ya so tobe la la bando. Danda maso puri ya la la. So la bande le ki ya la la bando. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you today for everything that you're doing. Father, we thank you for the new broadcast system that you uh, allowed us to understand and to begin to work. And Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you now that those that are connected by Twitter, those that are connected uh, through Facebook, those that are connected uh by twitch those that are connected in jesus name by youtube that father you will begin to open up the doors that you will begin to let them see that we are there that we are available and so father as they come in father i pray in jesus name that you will cause insight and revelation and understanding to be released and to give it in jesus name amen father we thank you now that everything that you're doing in the in the earth realm it's according according to your plan and so father we give you praise we give you glory and honor in jesus name amen all right all right so we're going to be talking about a number of things today but god bless you everyone um as you come on and as you see the replay um my name is apostle deron ferguson uh, I am the founder and the overseer of the House of David Global Equipping Center for those who do not know me and those that will uh, begin watching. Uh, this is our first time broadcasting this way, so please bear with us. Um, and so we pray that you guys will connect and you guys will become a part of what we're doing. All right, so again, God bless you. Good afternoon. Hello to everybody. All right, so we're going to dive right into this. Uh, so there's a couple of things that I want to uh, begin to discuss and talk about. And um, this is some things that I've been seeing in the body of Christ. Some things that uh, people have been coming to me with as well. Concerns, um, different things of that nature, as well as some things that the Spirit of the Lord has been putting in my heart. So I want to talk um, uh, about uh, the Ascension Nature gifts very quickly. I want to talk about the image of God. And then also I want to begin to decree and declare over you um, something that God had put in my heart to declare over everyone. And uh, that is that you will begin to manifest uh, and see the seeds that you have sown begin to come back to you uh, a billion times over, a million times over, a thousand times over. All right. So let's get right into the word of God. So um, one of the things that I've been hearing lately is that uh, people have been coming, talking about apostles and prophets, false apostles, how to identify them. Uh, many people have been saying, you know, stop giving money to them. Uh, true apostles and prophets don't ask for money. Uh, different things that I've been seeing and hearing. And so I want to bring just a uh, uh, another point of view, a balanced point of view as it pertains to Ascension Nation Gives. Um, and we're going to have to do this over a course of time because it's so much to unpack because we're talking, we're going to talk about the rights that apostles have, the rights that ministers of the gospel have. And so many people miss these things. And uh, I believe that we are allowing the world's way of doing things, the carnal understanding to infiltrate and overstep and usurp the authority of God's divine laws. OK, so let's go into this. Um, we're going to start at Ephesians 4, and we often hear this. Ephesians 4, we often hear this. Please share, please invite. God bless you. This is our first time broadcasting this way. So uh, if you can invite and bring people on uh, so we can uh, bring a, an audience, that would be awesome. So we're going to start first talking about the Ascension Nature gifts and how they function. And so uh, let, let's go to Ephesians 4 chapter i mean the chapter four and we're going to start at verse number 11 and so i'm not going to really unpack much of this but i want to bring out some specifics okay so ephesians chapter four and we're going to start at verse number 11 
okay? Ephesians chapter 4. I'm sitting in Luke. I'm sorry, you guys. Give me one second. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 11. So this is Ephesians where uh, uh, most people start ministering this when they talk about the gifts. The apostle, the prophet, the pastor, teacher, the evangelist. This is where people get the fivefold ministry aspect from. But I want to break some things down to you and give some more explanation and understanding. The Bible tells us that in all of our getting, get understanding. And so one of my graces is to bring understanding and unpack mysteries, unpack the word of God so that we can understand what is being said. So here I'm going to start at verse number 11. This is typically where everybody starts at when they talk about the ascension nature gifts or the fivefold ministry gifts, offices, positions. And I want to show you something in the scripture. So verse number 11 says, and verse number 11, I want to start at the, uh, in the King James, I'm going to go between different translations so we can unpack this in different ways. Okay. So watch this. Verse number 11 says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some uh, pastors and teachers. So number one, we're going, and I'm going to walk you through this. Number one, it is he, it is God himself that gave the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, and evangelist. So number one, with this being said, you cannot want to do something that God did not ordain for you to do because it is him, it is he himself that gave these gifts. The Bible says when he ascended, he gave gifts unto men, okay? So it is he that by his own authority, by his own jurisdiction, by his own mind, by his own predestination, according to the plan that he has set for you, it, he has already decided who is going to be some apostles, who is going to be some prophets, who is going to be some evangelists, some teachers, and some pastors, now, let me give you a context of this scripture. When the scripture is saying, and he gave some to be apostles, he is not limiting it like most people limit it. Okay, watch this. He is not limiting the sum to be it's only three or it's only five. In the sum, in this context, people of God, he's talking about a remnant. Okay, Marande. He's talking about a remnant of people. Okay, so look inside of the generation that we're in. There is a remnant of people with inside of the current generation that make up the sum who are apostles. Come on, somebody. There is a sum of people, a sum. A sum is a number. Come on, it's an amount of people. So the sum, if you say one plus one, give me the sum of one plus one. It means give me the answer. Give me the, the collective answer viewpoint of one plus one and that means that it's two i hope that makes sense so some people in come on somebody in your generation in generations before us i hope this makes sense and generations after us are apostles come on and some are prophets and some are teachers and some are evangelists and some are pastors and watch this uh, paul says in corinthians he said are all apostles no. Are all prophets? No. Pastors, teachers, evangelists? No. But then Ephesians tell us, but some of them are. Come on, somebody. It's not just a little bit of people. It's a large group of people, but it's a remnant of people. I hope that makes sense. It's just some of them. It's not everybody that is, a, that is an apostle. So I want you to understand that. Now, watch this. I want to take you to verse 7 in this same chapter so I can give you the understanding of something. So let's go up to verse, matter of fact, let me go to verse number one, okay? In ver, uh, chapter four of Ephesians, verse number one, so we can get a context. I love context and I love principle. Principle is better than anything because principle trumps any type of thing that a person can give you detail, uh, revelation, or anything like that. You get the principle, you have it all, right? So watch this. The principle and context of this chapter is Paul is talking about functioning in the unity of the faith according to the measure of grace and gift that has been given to the some people. I'm going to say that again. In this fourth chapter, Paul is talking about 
functioning with other people according to the measure and gift that has been given to you. I must show you. Watch this. In verse number one, Paul says, therefore, I, a prisoner of the Lord, I implore you or beseech you. Paul is urging and begging us. Let me say, so watch this. When he said, I beseech you, this is Paul begging. Paul is urging us, come on somebody, watch this, to walk worthy of the calling or the vocation by which you've been called. Okay, let me break this down. Paul is urging us, Paul is begging us to walk worthy of the vocation or the job or the, uh, or, or the calling, the assignment that we have been called to function in. And I'm going to show you, if we read in context, Paul begins to tell us what type of assignment, what type of vocation that he's urging us to walk worthy of. Let's keep going down. So remember, number one, number one sets the context. It sets the context. Paul is talking about vocation, okay? Working. What is your assignment? Come on, somebody. So now, with that being said, he says, do this with all humility. Now he tells us in verse number two, he starts telling us how to walk worthy of the vocation. And I'm going to show you why he's saying this, okay? He says, with all humility and gentleness and patience, Watch this, showing tolerance for one another in love. Verse number three, being diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Why is Paul saying that? And let's keep going down. He says, verse number four, because there's only one body. The Bible said, Jesus said, a house divided against can't stand, against itself cannot stand. So he is saying, watch this, that we need to do, because we need to walk this way, humble, gentle, patient, okay, uh, uh, tolerating each other with love. And this is not the tolerance that he's just saying, oh, we just tolerate each other. He's saying putting up with each other and dealing with each other according to love. Not your feelings, not your emotions, not what you feel in the situation, but according to what love. And what does love do? Love don't believe the wrong. Love believes the best. Love persists with you always. Love does not fail. Come on, somebody. Love is kind. Love is patient. So we got all of these different things that love, come on, manifest. Because love is not something. Love is a person. The Bible says that God is love. He's a person. Right? So watch this. There's one body. There's one spirit. Just as also you were called into one hope of your calling. One hope of your calling. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is in you, the hope and the glory. So we've been called to one hope and one faith and one hope and manifestation of these uh, watches of these vocations because these vocations were split down and given to some by one source i hope you're understanding this watch so watch this so this is why we can't be arguing about apostle prophet pastor teacher evangelist, who's who da, 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 because you ain't get it but by the same source i hope you're getting this so watch this. He's saying it's one body, it's one faith, it's one Lord, and you're supposed to be walking accord with your vocation and ministering your vocation firstly by these things, humility, gentleness, patience, uh, love, and, and being diligent to preserve unity. Okay, so watch this. Let's keep going down. Then, and then after Paul says this, he says, watch this, but to each one of us was giving uh, according to the measure of Christ's gift. Let me read that in another translation. In verse number seven. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So now watch this. Let's keep going. He said the one that, uh, the same one that uh, ascended is the one that laid captivity captives and he gave gifts unto men. Now watch this, Paul is telling us in verse number seven, he said to each one of us have been given, watch this, this grace according to God's gift. So watch this, the ascension nature is a grace, number one. And grace is not just a mercy. It's just not a forgiveness. It's not just, uh, uh, you know, it's God's undeserved favor. Grace is also God's divine ability and, and, and enablement to carry out 
and assignment. Let me say that again. God's grace is also God's divine enablement and his nature and his ability to carry out an assignment. This is why Paul is saying walk worthy of the vocation or the assignment. And every one of us has, come on somebody, a grace gift, a gift of grace so you can fulfill your assignment. And what are the grace gifts that every last one of us in the body of Christ got? Watch what he says. He says to some, he's gave an apostle. To some, he's gave a prophet. To some, he's gave an evangelist, a teacher, and a pastor. Everybody is not an apostle, but some of them are. And none of them, all of them are not prophet, pastor, and but some of them are. Now watch this. If we understand what God does in every generation, every generation of believers have apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, and evangelist in there. Every single one of us has one of those gifts. But everyone don't have the same gift. Only some have the same. Only some has this same. That is the point that Paul is trying to make. Everybody is not the same gift. You need to find out what grace you function in so you can walk worthy of that in humility and in righteousness. You should never be fighting to get in somebody else's lane because you at your own measure of grace and divine ability and divine enablement to deal with your assignments. I hope that makes sense. Okay, you don't have to step into another lane because the grace is in your lane. You don't have to try to be a, like another apostle because if you're called to be an apostle, you got your own lane. You got your own measure of grace. He said, according to the measure of grace given to you, walk worthy of that. You can't walk worthy of mine, can't walk worthy of hers or his. You have to walk worthy of yours in humility and in patience and suffering long with people because you have to be unified by the faith. I hope that makes sense. Okay? So that's number one. Okay? We, we have a lot of people that that is not understanding what they've been called to do. And those that think they know what they're called to do, they're not walking worthy of that vocation. Shalom, shalom to everybody that's coming on. So watch this. You, you cannot choose to be an apostle. You cannot choose to be a prophet. You cannot choose, come on somebody, to be something that God has not already given you because he has given it by his own accord. Okay, let me read this one more time in a different translation uh, and, and so we can get this. In verse number, in verse number 11, Let's go back to that. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version very quickly. It says, it says, and his gifts to the church were buried and he himself appointed some to be uh, apostles. So watch this. He says his gifts to the church were buried. So he gave the gifts not just to one man, some man, watch this, but to all men, women and men. He gave it to, watch this, when he said that he gave gifts unto men, he was not talking in this context about a, a, a natural man. He was talking about literally humankind. Okay, I know most of the time when he say M-A-N, it's talking about humankind. But even in this context, he was talking about humankind. Okay, so watch this, all men, all women, all humankind has a grace as a measure before you were born, while you were being conformed or formed rather in your in the, the mind and the heart of God. This is not really your mind, but in the in the brain or the central service, uh, system of God to create you. OK, he already knew that I'm going to call you as an apostle. You will probably you a teacher, you an evangelist. He knew that. That's why when he ascended. He activated that gift by putting the grace on you. I hope that makes sense. That's why Paul says that he's given us a measure of grace according to the gift. Because the gift is already there. Then he put the grace there. That means he enabled you to now walk it out. It's a grace gift. It's a gift that's activated by the grace, the ability and the, na the nature of God to complete a particular thing. Okay, an assignment. So watch this. You need to be careful. I need to be careful. We need to be careful of apostles, definitely, who don't know or don't have an assignment. Because when you're called to be an apostle, you have an assignment. You have an assignment. Jesus gave his apostles an assignment. 
He gave them power, say, go cast out devils. Go heal the sick. Go raise the dead. You cannot be an apostle without a vision, without an assignment. All apostles have assignments. So when you tell you're an apostle and somebody asks you, what's your vision, what's your assignment? You say, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what God is saying. You're not functioning. You're not ready. You're before your time. Because when he sends you out, you will go out with instructions and an assignment to fulfill. You cannot just go out there and say, I'm just going to be an apostle. What are you apostolizing? What are you pioneering? Where have you been sent to go? Who are you talking to? Who is your people? Where are they at? Do you have a tribe? What are you doing? What type of apostle are you? You cannot do that. You Many people are trying to put an apostleship in a bishopric. You can want to be a bishop. You can desire to be a bishop. You can go to your apostle and say, hey, apostle, I want to be a bishop and help you. With, I, I want to help you extend your vision and your ministry. And if you are in a right standing and you have, according to scripture, they can say, hey, I want to make you an, a bishop. And see, watch this. Many bishops have tried to make themselves higher than apostles. Okay, so watch this. And that is not the truth. Bishops are an administrator of an apostle. A bishop is an apostle's apostle, just like an apostle is Christ's apostle. Bishops do not make themselves. Bishops do not just stand up with no authority. They are sanctioned, they are affirmed and ordained by apostles. I hope that makes sense. Bishops don't have a network of their own. Not true bishops. Most of these people that are that, that are moving as bishops and having all these networks and sons and daughters, they're really apostles. And some of these people that are functioning as an apostle, they are bishops. Bishops are in a, a high class administrator. I know you ain't going to like this, what I'm saying, but it's biblical. A bishop is nothing more than a top flight security guard. That's what they do. They assist somebody else. They don't birth nothing of their own. They don't have that grace. All they have a grace to do is administrate and expand what is given to them. I hope you make sense. I hope that makes sense. That is the only grace or office, rather, in Scripture. There is no other offices in Scripture. It's only bishop. Apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, and evangelist is not a position. It's, not a, it's a place that you dwell. It's a place that you function from. Okay, it's a realm. Okay, and most people don't understand that. It's not just a uh, position. It's not an office. The Bible just said it's a gift. It's a grace. Okay, the only office you can hold is the bishopric. Okay, that's it. Okay, now watch this. The only thing, the only people that are set in place as leaders with hands laid on them and, uh, for ordination other than bishops, is elders and deacons. Apostles are, uh, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists are not ordained. They are affirmed and confirmed. Why? Because before the foundation of the world, God already ordained them. How do you know, man of God? Because Jeremiah, he says, Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you. Before I set you apart as a prophet unto the nations. Paul said, had a similar uh, uh, saying. Paul said, listen, it pleased God that while I was in my mother's womb, he separated me unto this great ministry of the apostleship. So watch this predestinated order says that when you are born, you have already come on somebody, come into the earth with a God gift. But now what happens is until you are regenerated, until you are revived, until you are restored and reconciled to the power of God, you do not have the ability or the functionality to carry out the assignment. That's why when you come into Christ, you also get empowered, catch that word, empowered and endowed with a supernatural ability that clicks on power to come on somebody with your gifts and your graces and, and, and now you begin to operate. But before that, you didn't have power or the ability to do anything but sin. 
and if you use your gifts, it was for the wrong purposes. But when the Spirit of God comes, He ignites and He brings you back into truth. So let me let me go just a little bit further, and I'll, I'll be done very very soon. So that's one thing we have to understand: becoming a apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist is not by your choice. Becoming an apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist is already given. The cho the choice is made by God. Okay, watch this, and now you have to choose to walk in it. And there's ways that you have to uh, function and things you have to do to come into that. Now, watch this. I want to throw this other scripture out there. The Bible says that Jesus says, I, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. Come on, somebody, that you may be a witness unto the Father. So watch this. Same thing when it comes to this apostolic grace and the prophetic and the teacher and all of this stuff. You didn't choose what great, great, uh, grace gift you're going to have. God then put it out on the table and say, pick one, pick two, pick three, pick four if you want to. This is a smorgasbord, whatever you want. No, he specifically gave you the measure he wanted you to have. Now you got to figure out what measure you got. You don't just adopt the measure. <laughs> okay? You connect and, um, and, and ignite the measure that you have. So some people are trying to choose what measure they want. They're trying to choose what they want to put on their plate. At the, uh, at the all-you-can-eat buffet. But this is not that type of buffet. God has already set before you life or death. Choose life. He already set before you the measure he gave you. You don't have the right or authority to choose another measure. And watch this. Let me just debunk this crap. You don't graduate into another measure. There's no way you graduate into another measure. You gra oh, I gra God graduated me from a prophet to an apostle. No, you don't graduate. You are, you are a prophet, and you don't graduate from a prophet to an apostle. You, you don't have that. The only thing you can do is you can function from the smallest. Usually God will use you at a smaller rate, and you'll grow and grow and grow and grow into the maximum ability of what you've been called to. You don't get to the height of your prophetic and say, oh, now God has graduated me to an apostle because I did well in the prophetic realm. You know how much measure is in that prophetic realm that you got? I guarantee you, you ain't really maximizing. Because if you maximize it as a prophet, you will be functioning like an apostle. And, you, and people would think that you're an apostle, but you're not. Because prophets have an apostolic grace. And the more you begin to move that in that apostolic grace, and if you connect it to true, strong apostles, you will get a, a, a stirring in the apostolic grace, and the apostolic grace will also fall upon you. And as a prophet, you'll be doing a, apostolic exploits. That's why we're saying we're apostolic and prophetic. Because apostolic means that I'm doing, I'm living, and 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 um and uh I'm doing, I'm living everything that pertains to the lifestyle and ministry of an apostle. Same thing with a prophet. If I say I'm prophetic, I'm doing and I'm living that which pertains to the life of the prophet. Now you may not be perfect in it, but that's what you're living and that's what you're moving towards. Because prophets are building. Uh, apostles are building your life, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Okay? So watch this. And, and, and this is another thing I want to get at, too. Now, now this is why, this is, be very careful about apostles and prophets and pastors and evangelists who are so, so gun ho about being that. It, that that's a very, very uh, 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 fl a big flag you need to watch. Caution and red. Because when you really, really are chasing apostolic ministry, I guarantee you, you're not called for apostleship. Because if you really understand what it takes to function as the apostle that God really put in you as the measure, you're not going to want it. You're going to run away from it. For real. If you're a prophet and you running after being a prophet, you don't understand. Because prophets go through too much stuff. Pastors, teachers, or evangelists, people that's running after the gift, they so gun ho about it, I watch them. Because first of all, watch this. If you are a true apostle, the first and foremost thing that you have to do is die. And so apostles will always be struggling about dying to their own self. Because apostles are born to die that life can be given. Watch this. 
no one lives, no one's born without someone dying. So it is in the spirit. He said, let the grain, let the, uh, the grain fall down to the ground and die or buy it alone. So apostles ministry in order for you to be activated to bring people and compel them to come. You got to die so he can live. So apostles, they are born into the earth, into the earth to be a sacrifice unto death that someone else can live. This is why Paul said, I die daily. Because the only way, come on somebody, to really manifest the apostle Christ, the Christ apostle, not your apostle, the Christ in you, the hope of glory apostle, you have to die. Paul said, I carry my cross daily. I put myself on the cross daily because I got to die that is no longer I, but it's Christ. And if you're saying that you're a real prophet and everybody is accepting you, it's something wrong. Because real prophets go through more rejection than they go through acceptance. I want to say that again. More prophets, real true prophets go through more rejection than they go through acceptance. The Bible says that Jesus went to go do some things in his own hometown and his own people did not receive him. The Bible said he was despised. He was rejected of all men. How are you going to be a prophet and everybody in the world likes you? It's a problem. I guarantee you that you are muscle. I guarantee you that you are compromising somewhere. Because if you are a real prophet, you should be called names. They should talk about you. They should dislike you. They should dishonor you. Because he promised that if you walk in the things of Christ, they will dishonor you and dislike you for my name's sake. It's nothing you can do. They are going to hate you if you're really walking in the spirit. Because they hate him. And whether you name the name of Christ, because the power of Christ is resident in your life, on your life. They're going to hate you. So when you are widely accepted, come on somebody, it's a problem. You should go through seasons where people don't like you. They don't want to listen to you. They don't want to hear you. You talk too much. You talk about this. You go too hard. Why? Because I'm chasing demons out of you. I am causing you to come into the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And I have no time to come down to your level. God said, come up hither. You down too low. And one of the things, people of God, is you need to be careful of apostles who are, are too alive. Apostles should not be that alive. I'm not saying they should not have no life, but they should not be that alive. It's too many apostles alive. What do you mean, man of God? You're still sleeping outside your bed. You're still masturbating. You're still doing this. You're still, I'm not saying you're going to have no problems, but your whole life is laying down with sin. It's a problem. Paul had some issues because he had a thorn in his flesh. So I'm not saying that you won't have nothing. But what I am saying is that your lifestyle, a situation does not make your lifestyle. A circumstance doesn't make your lifestyle. Something that you need deliverance from does not cultivate a lifestyle. It means you need healing. It means you need deliverance. It means you need to confront some stuff. But with every area of your life, is broken when every area of your life is being led by demonic forces when every area of your life there's a problem because we're always working on our soul salvation what that means is you always got an issue that you got to confront you're never going to be perfect until you're perfect and right now your perfection is only in him through the blood so until you can, until you die and cast all of those stones at your own self, until you take the beam and the, and the log out of your own eye, you need to die. You need to die. So, so that that's another thing. We got so many people that are still living, but they call themselves apostles. You got too many of prophets that is widely accepted, but they are prophets. No, let me tell you something. Your life gonna be marked prophet with rejection. Marked, marked, marked. There's nothing you can do outside of that unless you just get out of the spirit realm and just be a psychic. If you're walking as a prophet in the spirit, first of all, you're going to be rejected for the rest of your prophetic life. Period. I'm not saying you ain't going to be accepted. 
but you're going to be widely profit, widely, 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 widely rejected. And guess what? It's going to be most of the rejection from your own people. Now watch this. For the apostle, you're going to have to die, but you're also going to get killed. Look at all of the apostles, starting with Christ. They all got murdered. They all were martyrs for the name and the gospel of Christ. So you may not die in the natural, but you need to die in some area of your life, maybe to the flesh, right? We all need to die to the flesh. But watch this. If you're not dead, well, number one, you can't be actually be alive. The Bible says that if you want your life, lose it. If you want, if you gain your life, you, you lose life. If you really want life, lose your life. Meaning, come out of the flesh. Lose, lose all that. And you'll get eternal life. But if you want this life, you, uh, you, you negate and you forfeit eternity. Here comes the scripture. What is it that a man gain the world and lose his soul? The, young, the rich young ruler, he said, I want to follow you. I want to be a part of your clan. Jesus said, okay, sell all your stuff and then come follow me. He put his head down and walked away. You know why? Because he wanted riches more than he than he wanted the rich. He wanted, he wanted this life more than he wanted that life. Now watch this. Jesus would have made sure that he got all his stuff back in this life and in the next. Because watch this. The Bible tells us that our blessings are not just for the next life, so to speak, or the next realm of etern the, the, the other side which is called eternity. He said that you're going to get it here in the earth realm. You're going to get it here. So, so watch this. Why is it that we can't live in houses, have good cars, and have land, and own businesses, be millionaires, be billionaires? Is it because we got Christ? The devil is a lie. Because the Bible says that Christ is a king. <laughs> The Bible says that Jesus is the king of all kings. He's the Lord of all lords. And if I'm sitting in places with him, I should be ruling with him. And because I'm actually not physically sitting up there with him, but I'm ruling, I should be ruling here. Why am I waiting to get a mansion up there? Hello? I'm ruling down here. I want a mansion here. Why am I waiting for them? Because when you came, you came to restore the Adam, the Adamic nature, which means I'm a ruler. I'm dominion. I'm the keeper. Everything submits under my authority. So why am I waiting to the next life to get what he told me is mine now? Hello, it's yours now. If God got a mansion in the heavens, why you can't have a mansion in the earth? Who told you that he don't want you to do this in the earth? I thought he said above all things, 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 I want you to prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. Why would the Bible tell you he gave you power to get wealth? Come on. But he wants you to be broke in the earth realm. What do he give me power for if I can't use it? What is the purpose? You understand what I'm saying? What we have to understand is that this is what is being taught is a gospel that is being that is being so watered down so that people can get followers. Let me tell you something. You might not like what I'm going to say. God is not concerned about souls. Uh, we are concerned about souls. I mean, let me say that again. God is not concerned about souls. Not God. It's us that are concerned about souls because we're trying to get all those that are in the kingdom that's supposed to be in the kingdom together so we can make up a body. But God don't care about souls. You know why? Because the Bible says that all souls belong to God. Hello? It says, the earth, watch this, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and everything. Souls dwell in the earth. He owns everything. Even the things in the earth. So don't tell me what you're talking about because you're wrong. God owns everything. He's not worried about souls. His first thing is his kingdom. He's a king. 
He's a king. He's concerned about his kingdom. He's concerned about his dominion. He's concerned about his rulership. Why? Well, how do you know? I know. I can tell you again why God ain't really concerned about souls because he's sending souls to hell. He's sending them to hell. If he was that concerned, he'd just include everybody and let them come to heaven. That's not his first concern. I'm not saying he don't love you. He sent himself down here to die for you. So he does care for you. But his first concern is his own character. Hello? His first concern is his word. And his word is his kingdom. Because he is the word. There, listen, the king is what makes the kingdom. A kingdom it survives because of the king. It is on the king's reputation that the kingdom stands. So do you think he cares about what you can do rather than what he needs to do? Because if my soul, if his word is proven wrong, his name is proven wrong, and his kingdom is proven wrong, and what are we living for? And that means that Satan really, it really is what he said he is, and he has done what he said he's going to do, which is to sin higher than our father. So if you think that, you're not in the kingdom. You're not in the kingdom. I hope you understand that. If you think that way, you're not in the kingdom. Or you have not been taught this way. So I'm glad you're hearing it right now. Okay? So I, I, I'm going to stop right there because I got two other things I want to say. No, let me let me keep going. Okay? Number, number two, this is why we're getting deceived is because these people that are claiming apostolic ministry, prophetic ministry, all that type of stuff, they have exchanged the truth of God for a lie. Let me show you something in, in Romans. Let me show you something in Romans. And before we go there, I want to give you, I want to give you something real quickly. Many people talk about unbelievers, right? And many people talk about unbelievers as if it is somebody who's never been saved. Okay? No, 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 no. That's not it. There are three types of believers, three main categories of believers. Number one, you have a non-believer, N-O-N believer, a non-believer. That's a person who don't believe in God. Okay? Then you have an unbeliever. Okay? No, no, no. Let me go back. You have a non-believer, a person who do not believe in God. They probably never believe in God. They choose not to believe in God. They are non-believer. They might not ever believe in God. Then you have a believer, a person who believes. Okay? Then you have an unbeliever. An unbeliever is not a person who never believed before. An unbeliever is a person who believed and they stopped believing. Thus, un. They undid their belief. Okay? An unbeliever is a person that did believe before. So now, when we go from here and you say, oh, that's an unbeliever, you need to be careful because that might not be a person, that might be a person who never believed. You have to understand what an unbeliever is. An unbeliever is a person who undid their belief in what they were believing in. They unbelieved. That means they were believing before, but they stopped believing. Okay? That's very important to note. So let me show you this in verse no, in, in, in Romans. In Romans chapter 1. Let me go to verse number 18. Okay? Verse number 18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Romans chapter 1, verse number 18. For the, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in righteousness. Okay? So watch this. The wrath of God is upon men who, who, who suppress the truth. They, co they compromise with what is right. We're going somewhere with this. Verse number 19. Because that which is known about God is evident within them. For God made it evident to them. So watch this. These are people who got God in them and they know that they got, God, they got God in them. We know that they got God in them because God made it evident. God bless you. God made it evident because it's he manifested what was in them. He made it evident. So we know now that these people are of God. Come on, watch this. Verse number 20, for since the creation of the whole world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, 
being un understood through what has been made so that there are without they are without excuse so watch this what he's saying is every single thing that we see every single thing that happens every single day we know that it cannot be something that a man did this has got to be the father and everything around us is making it evident that there is a god okay so watch this this is beyond the point that God is manifesting through them. So Paul says this, that God is manifesting through these people. And so we know that they know God. We know that God is in them. And then he says, as well as these same people can look out and see all the creation and see what God has made, know that it came from a visible person that made this stuff. And that is also what eliminates any other else excuses. So Paul says, watch this, with the evidence that's coming out of this person, plus everything that God has done around us, they, they watch this, these people are without excuse. Let's keep going. They're without excuse. He says, for even though they knew God, okay, there we go. Verse number 21, he said, they knew God. They did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish hearts were darkened. Let's keep going. He said, professing to be wise, they became fools. And it, what? here go the key. Verse 23, they exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corrupt, corruptible man and of birds and of four-footed animals and crawling creatures let's keep going therefore watch this therefore therefore god gave them up to degrading passions for their women exchange the natural function that which is unnatural that means they slept with each other okay watch this and for this uh watch this and the and in the same way also men abandon come on the natural function of women and burned. So now we talk about flaming men. Okay. So 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 watch this. When the LGBT community get upset because you call one of them men flaming, it's biblical. God called you flaming. God called you flaming. Peter, I mean Paul says that you're flaming. You became inflamed with lust. Hello, we're not we're not picking on you. We're telling you the truth. You're inflamed. So watch this. They began to be flamed up with these passions. They abandoned the natural function of women and burned in their desire towards one another. Men with men committing indecent acts, abominable acts. Okay, and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. So I'm going to stop right there. The due penalty of their error receiving with inside of themselves is to STDs. Simple as that. They're receiving in themselves the due penalty. But also it could be the torment and the brokenness and all of the levels of control and dominance and bondage that come with the soul tie that they created. I hope that makes sense. So God, watch this. God gave them up so that they can fulfill their lust. So watch this. So that they can go where they're destined to go. Everybody is not destined to go to heaven. I'm sorry. That may hurt your feelings. But everybody not go, is not going to heaven. Not because they're going to make a wrong decision only. Some people are destined to go to hell. It's called predestination. Now watch this. Everybody got an apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, or evangelist on them and in them because God made it like that for all humans. If that's not so, how do we get false apostles, false prophets, false teachers, false evangelists? Because they still have God's grace and gift in them, but they choose to use it with wrong sources. The enemy can't give you an apostleship. He can use the apostleship of God, though, if you allow him to and pervert it. Huh? The enemy can't produce prophets. He can pervert a prophet, though, and use that prophet for his own prophetic gestures and functionalities. The gifts come from God, not Satan. 
the empowerment comes from whichever source you submit to. So Satan can empower God's gifts if you let him use them. And God can use those gifts if you let him use them. It's who you serve. It's who you submit to. You are the gateway. You are the portway. You are the filters of the source that wants to flow through you. You have to give them permission. Okay? That's why the Bible says, choose ye this day who you will serve. Who will you let flow their power through your filters? Would it be God or would it be Satan? He went deeper. He said, if God be God, serve him. Let him use your filters. If Baal be Baal, serve him. Let him use your filters. Literally what he's saying, if God is God, be, let him be God. If Satan is Satan to you, let him be Satan. Whichever one is your God, let him be. You got to choose though. You can't have both. You got to have one or the other. Okay? So that was that's that. Another thing I want to say real quickly is uh, uh, one of the things that we're having, I'm almost done, is we're having an issue with discernment. Many people are talking about, you know, discernment, 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 but that's not what the Holy Spirit is after because I never see a gift in the Bible that says discernment. Okay, I, I see a gift that says discerning of spirits, but that's a particular translation. But when you look at the translation, it says it says the distinguishing of spirits. So when so the the gift for that that we call discernment is actually the ability to distinguish. Why are you saying distinguish, and why would it be that? Because distinguishing allows you it means it means in the simplest form to identify. To spec to spec uh, to specify, to be specific about or towards. Okay, so so God is very specific. He identifies. So it's not just discerning because you could discern anything. Remember, you're prophetic by nature. You're already prophetic. So you have things in you that will pick up stuff, sense stuff. You got senses. But what you cannot do is depend on those senses alone without the Holy Spirit. And most people are doing that and they are not discerning the actual uh, distinguishing the spirit. Why is it uh, imperative to distinguish the spirit? Because once you can identify the spirit, you can identify the source. The source is the spirit. The spirit is the source. Whatever spirit it is, that's your source. Whatever source it is, that is what spirit is coming from. Okay, the last thing I want to say before I begin to pray, and I'm going to cut this short. I have so much to give you, but I, I see the whole, I feel the Holy Spirit lifting, uh, and I need to pray for you guys. But um, the last thing is check the altars of your heart. Altars are put down for worship. That That is the whole point. Uh, it, it's a place of worship. It's a memorial. It's a place where you can gather. It's a sign of legal, uh, a legal right to a land. A legal right to a person, whatever the altar is, wherever that altar is, it denotes that there's an owner. Okay, that there's an owner, and whoever you put that, whoever you offer that altar to, that altar, that person or that thing is your owner. Okay, so so you got to be careful of altars. Okay, sometimes we can do things, but we have never set an altar. But sometimes we do things because we have set an altar. Okay, and so the altar. Uh, it's a sign of worship and ownership. Okay. Also, the altar is a uh, is a way that you lionize a particular thing. So that word means to celebrate, or to, well, it means to celebrate. But the core of the word means to make a celebrity. So when we lionize, we make a celebrity. And what I love about that word, I stumbled on that word some years ago. Uh, uh, researching and just, you know, praying and uh, doing some stuff about worship in my own private prayer study time. And I ran up on that word and, and immediately when I saw the word and looked up the meaning, I literally thought of the scripture that tells us that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And so, uh, uh, you know, to lion, and I love lions, that's my main thing, uh, but, but it was so amazing that it means to it's lionized, but it literally means to make a celebrity, to celebritize. Okay, and so we know that Jesus Christ is our lion. 
of our of the tribe, but he is also our celebrity. We make him, he is the celebrity. He said, if I be lifted up, if I be celebritized, I'll draw all men. If I be lionized, I'll draw all men unto me. So watch this. So we need to make God a celebrity, not people, not places, not things. We need to make him a celebrity. And I, again, I know we have things that we're all going through, but try not to make those things celebrities. Try not to make, try not to lionize them because lionizing something also means that you have placed the altar there. You cannot lionize something that you have not uh, offered. Something to, that you, you cannot lionize something that you have not given offering or yeah, offering or sacrifice to. Okay. So, so watch this. A lot of times we lionize people and we begin to lionize people by sewing into like, let's just say RB music. A lot of people listen to the RB music and then they start sewing their money, buying it. They buy every CD that come out, downloaded 99 cent here, everything like that. So now what is happening is uh, sometimes without them even knowing, they're lionizing this person. This person is becoming a celebrity, a god. And before you know it, it's yeah, yeah man, you hear that new song about da da da? Yeah, he said, and now the lyrics become. The lyrics become uh, your prophetic information. The, 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 the lyrics become your apostolic information, your apostolic insight, because you're learning and you're being poured into and you're being fathered by another source through music. So that's a whole nother lesson that I want to teach at, uh, at one point in time of, to minstrels and psalmists, because m music and singing is very, 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 very important. Okay, so lastly, this is what I want to do. I pray that you guys got something out of that. I'm going to do a volume two. Amen. Um, again, this is our first time broadcasting in this way. So all of those that are on our different media sites, our different pages on Facebook, um, as well as YouTube um, and uh, Twitch and Twitter, I get I bless God for you. Amen. So now what I want to do is um, can you put the song information? Up? Can you you can't do it? So um, there, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you guys to prepare to sow. What I want to do here is, um, what I'm going to do rather is, I am going to begin to decree over you uh, some things that God has told me to decree over his people. Um, and so uh, it will be very awesome if you guys would want to come and join into this. I have tagged and put the uh, sowing information at the bottom. Um, so this is what we're going to do. You can get a seed of any amount and sow it into that cash app. And I uh, also what I'm going to do is I want to decree and declare over your life, over your finances and over other areas of your life. Amen. Uh, the blessings of God that he had told me to. So um, so the cash app, I think I just put it there. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to do it again. Um, I'm going to put it in the news feed. I mean, uh, on the comment section. And I'm going to, you guys can go ahead and begin to sow, and I'm going to begin to decree over you. Father, in Jesus' name, I decree and declare now, Father, over every person that is sowing, every person that's under the sound of my voice, that you will begin to manifest great things concerning their life. God, even as they have connected in and heard the word of God, let it pour into them, let them digest it, and let it, God, uh, manifest great things for them. And so, Father, as you told me to do, I begin to decree over their life, God, that you will manifest the greatness of God a billion times over, a million times over, a thousand times over. Father, I speak over their finances and every single seed, every single dollar that they're sowing, I decree that it will give back a billion times over blessings. Father, I decree and declare in their life, God, that the joy of the Lord shall begin to manifest a billion times over, a million times over. I decree healing in marriages a billion times over. Father, I declare and decree that we will have insight a billion times over. I release wisdom upon your people a billion times over. Father, I declare and decree, God, that we will see breakthrough a billion times over, a million times over. I release a pioneering anointing upon your people a billion times over. I de declare and decree that the breaker's anointing, the breakthrough believer in you shall begin to rise and manifest a billion times over. I declare that every generational curse shall be broken off of your life and your lineage a billion times 
comes over. I declare and decree, hallelujah, that your vision shall begin to prosper and it shall begin to move a billion times over. I release access to you a billion times over. I release acceleration to you a billion times over. I declare and decree that from this day you shall begin to excel. You shall begin to accelerate to a billion times over, a million times over. I decree deliverance upon you and your house and your family and your finances, your vision, your business, a thousand times over, a million times over, a billion times over. I declare and decree that mental illness is broken a billion times over, that migraine headaches are dissolving and never coming back a billion times over. I decree and declare that we will be uh, protected from COVID-19 and every strand of COVID a billion times over. I declare and decree that we are under the shadow of the Almighty where we are protected and watched over and shamarred a billion times over. I declare and decree that the protection of God will come upon us and come upon our family and our children a billion times over. We will not have accidents and incidents and premature death and, and, and hospital visitations because we are healed and we're delivered and we're blessed a billion times over. Father, I decree and declare now that we will walk in humility a billion times over that every addiction that everything that is causing us to be addict and addicted to whether it's drugs whether it's pornography whether it's lies whatever it's smoking whatever it is break it a billion times over father we thank you in jesus name that we'll hear your uh, hear in the spirit pure and accurately a billion times over father i declare and decree that holiness uh, shall be our portion a billion times over righteousness shall be our portion a billion times over gentleness shall be our portion a billion times over hallelujah long suffering shall be a manifestation of our character hallelujah a billion times over i decree and declare that the image and the likeness of christ shall manifest out of each and every individual a billion times over i decree that the love of the lord has covered the multitude of sins a billion times over i declare that your mother your grandmother your grandfather your father your sister your brother anyone that is broken busted disgusted and that is uh that is uh, uh taken down by any illnesses whether it be cancer whether it be handicapped whatever it is i decree healing now a billion times over father i function the principle that if i just say the word that it shall be healed that you sent your word that it may heal of all manner of sickness and disease and i declare that anything that is this easing us causing our easiness hallelujah to begin to dissipate and to be irritated Rebando, so i decree peace i decree shalom a billion times over i decree order a billion times over i chase jezebel away a billion times over i release jehu against jezebel no longer will you be controlled manipulated dominated by demons and by devils and men and women of god that are narcissists but i decree and declare now freedom and liberty a billion times over i decree that the beauty of the lord shall rest upon your life a billion times over the humility of god a billion times over the grace of god a billion times over the the, the mercy of god a billion times over goodness of god a billion times over i decree that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life a billion times over that it shall track you down like a bloodhound it shall smell your center it shall follow you and look for you and find and create ways and invent ways to bombard you and over and to bulldoze you down with the goodness and the mercies of God a billion times over for the Bible said that the mercies of God they are new every morning and great to good is his faithfulness so I leave I release the goodness of his faithfulness my God I bless you a billion times over Hallelujah, I declare that the mercies that are new every morning, that they are released to you a billion times over. And today, hallelujah, this afternoon, I declare and decree that every area of your life, every seed that you sow, every time you prophesy, every time you preach, every time you intercede, every time that you have encouraged, every time that you sow, 
them seeds that you sow in the past, in the present, and the ones you will sow in the future. I declare and release a billion times over anointing upon your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. A billion times over. Rebando Saba. A billion times over. A billion times over. I declare breakthrough for you. A billion times over. Rebando Lamo. Your business shall grow. A billion times over. Your business shall grow. A billion times over. All of your seeds, your financial seeds shall come to you increasing a billion times over exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Hallelujah. I declare that the windows of heaven are open for you and that you will be poured out blessings that you have not enough room. Rebaso to contain. I release a billion times over anointing upon your life. Wisdom shall flow through you a billion times over. Answers to questions a billion times over. Wisdom, witty inventions a, a, bil a billion times over. Godly connections, divine connections, destiny helpers being released to you. My God, a billion times over. I declare investors shall come. From the north, the east, the south, and the west. A billion times over. Greater business ideas. Greater business connections a billion times over. In Jesus' name, I declare that every woman that is asking God to, to conceive and you're having problems with conceiving, I declare that your womb shall be open a billion times over. In Jesus' name, I declare that your fallopian tubes and your uterus and every area, my rebesota, is functioning, my God, a billion times over. In the name of that your womb will not just hold, but keep and push my available and protect the child hallelujah a billion times over I declare that every area of your life is in sync a billion times over thank you Holy Spirit I speak directly to high blood pressure and diabetes and my soda van low blood count I declare lebo sunday reke de be sundarana banda healing lebo sunday le de kan de a billion times over I declare and decree lebe so that your white blood cells are being strengthened my God right now in the mar lebe surba tele a billion times over. I declare that everyone that's having a, a swelling in their feet, that you will have my level so that, that it will go down to normal size and it will stay like that because of the a billion time of anointing of healing. I declare and decree my soul of those that have skin diseases. I declare and decree my soul remaining a billion times over. Hallelujah. I dec my God, I hear you, God. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that some of you have had a uh, a mixed uh, appetite and it's, it's really irritating you about your appetite and the Lord says my seven I'm calling your appetite hallelujah to come into right standing and right functionality hallelujah a billion times over hallelujah I speak directly to those uh, that are asking God to my me correct their eyesight their physical eyesight and I decree a billion times over I speak to those that cannot hear that are physically deaf those that even that are spiritually deaf and without comprehension I command your ears to pop open by the power and the authority of the healer Jesus Christ and you will hear a billion times Mando, you will hear a billion times over I speak to those that are asking God to fill them with the Holy Spirit. For those that are not filled with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I release Lebando, the indwelling. I release Cabrana and activate the Holy Spirit in you. I Sobla, I send him to you. And if you breathe him in, he is the Numa, the breath. He will Masobrande dwell in you. And I activate the evidence of speaking in tongues. Even those that need a refreshing in their tongue. In in their prayer language, I release a refreshing in Jesus' name. Those that need to be elevated in their prayer language, in their prayer life, I release an elevation. I impart, I stir my soul, I stir a desire, a fire to want to pray a billion times over. Hallelujah. Every witch, every warlock, every naysayer, every negativity, I cancel your assignment a billion times over. And I superimpose Kalabandi, the plan and predestination of Christ concerning each and every one of our lives. 
corporately and individually a billion times over in the name of Jesus. We will prophesy a billion times over. We will pioneer a billion times over. We will build a billion times over. We will be a people of substance a billion times over. We will be a people of faith a billion times over. I declare that your faith shall increase a billion times over. I declare that your faith shall be increasing a billion times over. I declare that your marriages shall be sound a billion times over. That you will have the mind of Christ a billion times over. That you will be a radical person in your faith a billion times over. That you will not be staunch, but you will be flexible in God. Am I rebe so in your faith. I break religious bondage. Hallelujah. A billion times over. I break traditional bondage a billion times over. Every dam, every wall, everything that has been erected to block you from your prosperity. I decree breakthrough. Hallelujah. A billion times over. Let no dam, let no wall. Come on, somebody. Let nothing separate you from the love of God. Every veil has been rent. And I release boldness. There you go. Father, boldness upon you a billion times over. You will be as bold as a lion. You will be bold like a lion. Come up, so that the boldness of the Lord comes upon you now. There is no fear in God. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out. It, it diminishes. It destroys. It annihilates every dimension and level of fear. And I speak perfect love upon your life a billion times over. Even the ability to love your enemies a billion times. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I release forgiveness. Manto rebesa. Yelaban de beke subruma de lebekenda. I release the charge of forgiveness upon your life. And as you forgive, you shall break through. As you muscle, as you forgive, you shall be healed. And I release forgiveness a billion times over. Hallelujah. Father, forgive us as we forgive those that are indebted to us. Father, don't let us harbor people because if we harbor people, you will harbor us. And so, Father, we forgive and we command our blessings to begin to be reenacted, that they begin to flow again, that they're not stopped and blocked and hindered because of unforgiveness. Hallelujah. But because when you forgive, you when we forgive, you forgive us. The, the prayer says, forgive us as we forgive. So, Father, give us my rebende. I release an anointing to forgive. My God. I release an anointing upon your life to forgive. I release an anointing upon your life. Cambranda la bosonda. To give. Sanda bambre que le bendo. Le bando la bojo, rabanda. I say, somebody said, well, I pray for you. I don't know your name because it's not showing me names, but please just put your prayer request where I'm there and I will pray for you. Yeah, I can't see no names. I just see anonymous. That's Shondell? Yeah. Okay, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for Shondell. I thank you for the men of God. I thank you for his life, his healing, his health. In Jesus' name, his family, I thank you for the call of God, the vocation upon his life. In Jesus' name, and I release it a billion times over grace and anointing. Father, I thank you for security. I thank you, my Torah. The Spirit of the Lord says He's getting ready to plant you, Shondell. God says He's getting ready to plant you. I don't, I don't really know too much about this, but I hear God say He's getting ready to plant you. It's as if you're getting ready to shift and move, not necessarily out of the physical location, uh, geographically is what I want to say, but it's like He's settling you. I see the Lord giving you a place as uh, like a place to stay um, uh, and, and you're settling there. And so I, I bless you and I pray and decree that every open door that's necessary, every connection that's necessary for Shondell to begin to settle in Jesus name for the next dimension. I release it a billion times over in Jesus name. Hallelujah. What, what she said? 
Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for Tiffany. I thank you for all that you're doing in her life. I decree and declare now a billion times over in her business. I decree a billion times over in her family. I decree a billion times over. I unblock you in Jesus' name. I hear you, God. Father, I unstop the blockage in Jesus' name. Even ideas, hallelujah, the wisdom, the strategy to move to the next dimension, the, the uh, next dimension and the next level. I declare and decree that depression, Marocos que te pende, will not sift her as wheat in Jesus' name. But I declare and decree now breakthrough. I declare and decree my sota momentum, levando. Yeah, I hear you, God. I release momentum upon you, Tiffany. I, and I hear the Lord saying, momentum shall come upon you, and not just you, but your business, your family. And and you shall begin to move and maximize. And the Lord said, because of your submission, because of your trust, because of the things that you have done, sacrificing for this time, God said, I have released the acceleration. I have released it to you, says the Spirit of the Lord, and you shall accelerate, you shall catch up, and even the blockages. The Lord said, I'm removing the blockages, the, the idea blocks, the uh, different ways to get things done, the depression that's tried to come and try to cause you to slow down and think twice. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, I've come to refresh you. I've come to remind you of what we have covenant together. And I am here with you. I am here beside you. I have gone before you and the enemy will not win. For I did not tell you that though his weapons may form and be forged, they shall not prosper. Hallelujah. But, but and every tongue that is spoken against you and what they say will be condemned and so the spirit of the lord said this is your heritage this is your right to, to be able to have dominion and authority over these things and so the father says that the wiles of the enemy the things that the enemy is trying to strategize against you the plans the plots the ploys and the schemes they will not prosper only have faith only trust me i hear you saying i trust the father i trust the father i trust the father and so the father says trust me daughter Trust me, daughter, even as you say in your heart, even as you say out your mouth, I trust the Father. I, Father, I trust you. Trust the Father. I keep hearing you say that, my name not just in your heart, but out your mouth. You say, I trust you, Father. I trust the Father. Uh, and the Lord says, just trust me and I shall do it. You trust me before and I did it. You trust me again and I did it. Now trust me now and I shall do it once more, says the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for Sherry. Father, I thank you for the heart and the desire to sow. Father, every area, my God, that she is sowing in, tomorrow she's sowing the word of God. And so I decree that the word of God will bring forth a major manifestation a billion times over. And so, Father, even as uh, Abraham he had faith and you counted it as righteousness. I, my son, but as an apostle, I receive her desire to want to sow and I equip it and connect it to her seed of faith tomorrow by the preaching and let that manifest and give her fruit a billion times over. Connect her desire to want to give to what she is actually going to give which is the priest's message and the word being sold as a seed and let her get billion uh, increase off of the word and her desire to sow in Jesus name. Let both aspects, her faith and her desire plus her action because faith without works, my God is dead. And so father, I thank you that her faith is to sow, but her works is sowing. So tie the faith of sowing the physical seed with the with the actual action of sowing the word tomorrow and let her get a manifestation from both a billion times over in Jesus name. Bless her. Let her move with power. Let her move with wisdom. Let her move in the prophetic. Let her cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. Anything she needs to do to bring Christ to those people, to grow them and equip them. My goodness, I release the anointing. I impart, I stir her up, hallelujah, and I encourage her, and I and I challenge her to go forth and do every single thing that the Spirit of God tells her to do. And as she's obedient, she'll see the fruits of her labor, and she'll be blessed by the people and by the faith that she is using to sow into this ministry. And so, Father, I cover her. 
I speak blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessing, increase upon increase upon increase, overflow upon overflow upon overflow, billion upon billion upon billion upon billion times over for Sherry in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Elder Lane, Elder Lane, God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, I bless you for Elder Lane. I thank you for the grace and the mercy of God that is upon her life. I decree and declare now that the, that the prophetic grace, that my kick of bone day will be stirred up in Jesus' name. I declare and decree that areas of, of depression, hallelujah, that areas, hallelujah, that is trying to cause her to be lethargic in Jesus' name, I decree and declare now a strength a fresh wind. I declare that no python spirit, my God, no viper-like spirit will try to coil itself around her and try to suck out the life of God in her. I decree that every, every destiny, every destiny leech, every virtue leech, I command death upon you. Every every locust, every can uh, canker worm, powder worm, uh, and caterpillar that had began and that have eaten at the vision of God, at the life of God, at the joy, at the peace, I command you to regurgitate it now in Jesus' name. Because God is restoring the years that all of you have taken and eaten. And so I declare my sobrande lebe sumbranda that you will regurgitate what you ate illegally. And I declare in Jesus' name, not just double for her trouble, a billion times over for her trouble. In Jesus' name, I cover her. I bless her father. I bless her ministry. I bless her uh, her, her her family. I declare and decree now that healing, my Rebe Sutolabande, shall come to her family, shall come to her father, shall come to uh, him that even the peace of God, the grace of God, can, I will help her to deal with the situation. I break irritation in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I decree peace in every area. I decree that your ministry, your business, hallelujah, everything that you own shall increase in the name of Jesus Christ a billion times over. Amen. Hallelujah. Daniel Duncan. Daniel Duncan. Hey, Daniel. God bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for my good, good friend, my brother, one of my best friends, Daniel Duncan. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for the grace of God upon his life. I pray for him and his family. I decree and declare now, hallelujah, great things for his family in Jesus' name. Father, I even pray for his ministry. I thank you for kingdom purpose and what they're doing and what you called them to do. Father, I just decree and declare now the wisdom, my God. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying to you, men of God, that in this season, he's going to give you a deeper strategy. He's going to give you a greater deep depth of wisdom and how to pioneer and break through into in your community and in the territory for the Lord said that I have called you and I've called this ministry to govern I've called this ministry I've called this people hallelujah to set as ones that will keep the gates that those that will shamar and protect my people in the land and the Lord said that this is the season that I'm causing an upgrade I'm causing a rank change a rank identification and the Lord said this is the season where I'm calling you higher Daniel I'm calling you higher men of God to a greater grace or a greater greater gifting to a greater momentum to a greater movement to a greater faith even your daughter the lord said that your daughter shall begin to take on your mantle the, the, the your daughter shall begin to take on your voice says the spirit of the lord and as she's growing and as she's as she's moving in the things of god the spirit of the lord said i'm going to push you into different areas and different things and different ventures because there's different things that i've called you to do and the lord says surely a strong apostolic grace is upon you and your wife and your daughter even the even the prophetic grace shall begin to stir up in the in your in your wife and i'm going to cause her to prophesy like she's never prophesied before i'm going to cause a healing anointing to manifest in her life like she's never manifested before all i ask is that she come into a deeper place so that i can ignite the healer in her because i see her hands glowing i see her hands burning with fire and the spirit of the lord says no it's not just deliverance but it is divine healing for your wife to function in and so i bless this family because you have come 
come from a lineage, says the Spirit of the Lord, with power. You've come from a lineage with holiness and righteousness. I have called your, my God, I've called you and your wife and your daughter to pioneer, hallelujah, a people, to reestablish a grace, to reestablish a truth, hallelujah, amongst your kinsmen, amongst your community, amongst your followers. And this is going to cause the glory of God to rise upon them. For I hear you saying, God, we need your glory. I hear you saying, Daniel, I want the glory of God in my church. I want the glory of God upon my people. I want the glory of God in my nation. I want the glory of God in my city. I hear you saying, I want it in the state. And the Lord said, I am preparing a people and I'm using you as one that is being prepared to prepare a people. And so the Lord says, thinking that strange that I will deal with you in the deep things. I will deal with you in the things in the night. I will deal with you things in the day. I will deal you with you things in the wee hours of the morning. He said, because I'm shifting you, I'm aligning you, I'm causing you to understand. And he said, did not my scripture say that I open up the minds of my apostles so that they can understand the scriptures. And the spirit of the Lord said, I'm causing in uh, my soul, I'm causing a momentum, I'm causing a shifting, I'm causing an alignment, and I'm causing my apostles to understand my scriptures. And so the spirit of the Lord said, think in that strange that I'm calling you to a higher place because this is the place that I've ordained for you to be but now is the time says the Lord and I'm going to use you as a vessel I'm going to use you as a voice I'm going to use you as a pioneer I'm going to use you as a reestablisher I'm going to use you at my soul Daniel I hear the Lord say you are my kinsman redeemer hallelujah I'm going to call you to my living suit to redeem. Come on, somebody. She, I hear him saying this. I'm going to call you to be one to redeem sheep that are not of this fold. Solabanda. My God. The Bible says that Jesus told his disciples that I have sheep that are not of this fold. Sheep that you know not about. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that there's a grace coming upon you that you're going to find, that you're going to win, and that you're going to my kelebe, you're going to help maintain, hallelujah, the sheep that are not of the fold. I hear God say, you're going to go to the alien. My God, you're going to go to the one that is non-believer. You're going to go to my libe soon. Now, you're going to win. He that winneth souls is wise, Daniel. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying unto you, wisdom shall be your portion. Strategy shall be your portion. The depths shall be your portion, says the Spirit of the Lord. I bless you. I bless your ministry. I bless your wife. I bless your daughter. I bless your leaders. I bless all of your members. I bless everything that your hand touches. And I decree a billion times over in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. That's my friend. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for my friend. I thank you for a long term friend. Um, uh, he's from my neighborhood. We grew up together. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for him. In Jesus' name, I bless God for the power and the grace of God that is upon his life. Father, I pray, God, that you have a gift, a grace, a calling upon his life. And I release understanding and wisdom upon his life that he'll understand the scriptures. Hallelujah. That he'll understand your spirit. That he'll be locked into the things that you'll call him to, to do in Jesus' name. And that'll be very clear what you call him to do. I pray for his daughter. I pray for his relationship with her. And I decree and declare now that you will continually provide for him, that he will be the father that you have called him to be. Father, I also pray for peace in between him and the mother of the child. And I declare and decree, God, that you will give him favor. God, that you will cause my lebesum, that everything that is causing irritation, aggravation, and confrontation to be settled in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the blessings and the faith of God concerning his life. I pray for his mom. I pray for his dad. I pray for his brother in Jesus' name. And I declare total healing in Jesus' name. I release the power of God over Charlie's life. And I declare in Jesus' name, healing and restoration in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the, uh, for the effectiveness and the long-suffering of these parents. 
to take care of this child and their family and all that they may have gone through and the good, the bad, the ugly, indifferent. But I release the grace of God a billion times over. Let supernatural miracles occur, uncommon miracles, uncommon breakthroughs in Jesus' name, supernatural feats and supernatural victories of the Lord. Let it manifest in the in the form of signs, wonders, and miracles in Jesus' name. I bless his finances. I bless his life. I bless his job. And I bless his business ideas. And I, I release manifestation and billion times over uh, manifestation in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, I pray for divine protection in Jesus' name while he's in the DMV area because it's very treacherous. And so, Father, I pray for him that as he's in and out of the city, that he will be divinely protected in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, Carla Williams, pray for healing of my liver. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for Carla. Carla, in Jesus' name, I speak directly to the liver. I command now. Masobanda. Matter of fact, God, I thank you for reminding me. I do not decree healing. I decree and declare now, Father, that you will go into the vaults and that you'll give her a new, a whole new liver. A whole, my Sebrondo. I remember years ago, Father, you showed me that there was a vault, many vaults of body parts, brand new, brand spanking new body parts that have never been used, never had mileage on it, <laughs> nothing. Okay. And so, Father, I decree and declare now, so grande, a divine surgery. Ha, Rebe Sunda. That you will exchange the liver and put a new one in there in Jesus' name. We don't want healing to the old liver. We don't want restoration to the old liver. Supernaturally change the liver. That's the miracle. By your hands, Father, rock. Lapando, Basquiando Procota, I release fire into that body now. I release fire to the liver. Sombra, and I declare a recreation by the power vested in me, the power invested in me. I wrought and create a new liver in you to the glory of God by the power of His Spirit. And now the massive fire, 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 the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God, mass, the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God. Rebendo, I release the fire. Sita, the fire, the fire, the fire. Burn, 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 burn. Fire of God, thick fire of God, blazing fire of God. Come on, so destruction fire of God. Come on, healing fire of God. Burn, burn, all consuming fire. Burn, burn, se le bende, burn. Brecando broco de breque le bende. Razo de le beto. Burn, so da ba. Recreate. Sambran de le beconde. Lepantos, kitipi, I tande proso, I declare that the blood is clean. I de brosa, I release, calabande, bleketala bosunde, a blood transfusion, a supernatural blood cleansing. In the bando, brekedebe, alaba sunda, you said that the word of God is quick, powerful, sharpening any two at the sword. Hallelujah, piercing and dividing asunder the, uh, come on somebody, the soul and the spirit, even to the piercing down to the bone marrow. And I said, I send the word of God to pierce down to the bone marrow, to go into every level of the bloodstream and cleanse out, come on somebody, everything that is stuck, stuck there, that has not been cleansed out because the liver is not operating its right way. I declare and decree that all 13 systems of your body is aligned properly in Jesus name the liver must work the liver must work you will not die come on I hear you Holy Spirit the Spirit of the Lord said Carla you will not die but you shall live to declare the wonders of the uh, uh, wondrous works of, of the Lord in the land of the living you shall not die but you shall live with long life the Lord says Carla I satisfy you I satisfy you with long life I satisfy you with long 
right. I break command the most sin that they can early death. I really my soul, I break it off your generation. I break it off your family priesthood. No more premature deaths. It stops with you. In Jesus' name, you will not die. But you shall live. I release fire upon you. I release a billion times over breakthrough. I release a billion times over new liver. I release a billion times over new blood. I release a billion times over new blood, a new bone marrow. In Jesus' name, I declare and decree. Rebando that your atoms are transforming. Your atoms are being my soul Taliban day metamorphosized your DNA is being changed and shifted and you are healed take up your bed and walk according to your faith let it be unto you hallelujah he shall do exceedingly abundantly above all you can actually think Carla according to the power according to the faith that works in you he said if you have a my soul not faith of a set great of the size of a mustard seed uh, that you can say to a big huge mountain you can say with your small faith uh, you can command your liver to be healed and we command that mountain of premature death I see you you gotta go every Goliath you are death you are death death you are Goliath and we slay you today. No power, no authority. The Bible says, death, where's your sting? Grave, where's your power? We speak life. So, Brandon, we have life and death in the power of the tongue. And I release life. Yato, Rabando, life, Carla, live. You will live. You gotta live. You shall live. No premature death, but life. And I bless you. I release life, healing to you, miracles to you, a billion times over. Carla, I want to say this to you. The Holy Spirit told me some time ago that miracles was the power, the nature, the ability of God to undo, to reverse something that has been done, an inordinate, uh, an inordinate, uh, undesirable situation, circumstance, or reality. So I release miracles that the current reality will be reversed. That the, cur my rebundo, that the current reality will be undone because miracles reverse and undo what is, what is currently done. And currently, your liver is not up to par, but the miracle, huh, the power and the nature of God will undo that situation, that inordinate situation, that undesirable circumstance and reality. And so I release miracles to you, the nature and the power of God to turn things around for you. And so I decree it, I declare it, I release it to you a billion times over and it shall be done in Jesus name. Amen. That's it. Hallelujah. So I found it. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for Lex, uh, Le Alexis. Lexi Cooper. Lexi Cooper. I pray for Lexi Cooper in Jesus' name. I decree and declare now breakthrough. I decree family problems, family issues would dissipate. I declare in Jesus' name freedom and liberty and the shalom of God. I decree and declare now the peace of God in the family. I decree peace. Calabando, reke labande, lebe kiske de bande. Ad maselebonde. I decree peace. I decree rest. I break the confusion a billion times over. I release truth in Jesus' name. Re calabando. I speak to your business plans, your potential ideas, and I declare and decree that God will give you strategy, that you won't have writer's block that you won't have vision block, visionary block, but you'll be able to articulate, you'll be able to write down, you'll be able to scribe down what God has given you. I declare and decree now wisdom upon your life. Hallelujah. I declare I my sovereign Now this word, uh, Lex, uh, if you're still there, it may be general, but this is what God is saying to me, to you. 
directly. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord said, I, he showed me that you are in a place of decision. And the Spirit of the Lord says that he's going to give you the wisdom to make the right decision. And so I release wisdom. I release uh, the ability and the strength to make decisions. I decree and declare now that she won't be torn. I decree and declare now that she won't be double-minded, that she won't make a decision and go back on it, but that she will make a decision and maintain it and keep it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I declare and decree that she will make the right decision. I break fear in Jesus' name. I destroy anxiety and impulse, and I release peace and perfection in Jesus' name. Bless her. Release healing. My sobrene. Bless her family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Labando. I even pray for job. I declare that the job opening, the job door, the open door for the job, for a job, she'll get it. I heard the Lord say job. Uh, so I, I pray for increase and in job placement. Whether it's a uh whether it's a, a new job, whether it's a business opportunity, or whether it's a raise, promotion. I just decree uh, great things in that area. And so, Father, I cover I cover them in Jesus' name. I pray blessings, protections, favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, Lakita Washington. Huh? Lakita Washington. Lakita. Mm -hmm. Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for... I thank you for... Lakita. Lakita. I thank you for Lakita Washington. I pray, God, that you will continue to move on her behalf. Uh, I hear the Lord saying that breakthrough is upon you. I hear the Lord saying that this is a season where I'm calling you to come out. I'm calling you to come out. I see doors that are open, like prison doors. And the Lord said that I'm calling you out. I'm allowing you to come out. I've been trying to get you out, but you, you, you kind of go back and forth in it. But the Spirit of the Lord said the breakthrough is here. The time is for you to go. And to do all that I called you to do for, yes, you are healed. And yes, I have called you into this place where you can begin to move in the momentum that I've called you to move in. And so now the Lord said your life will not just settle, but it will have a momentum. And so, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for the momentum. I thank you in Jesus' name for her hands being anointed. I see you writing. I see poetry. Uh, I see a short book, like maybe a short story, and I, I, I release the scribe anointing upon your hands that you will be able to write in Jesus' name. And I don't know if you do anything with music or, or what you actually do, but I see a ghost writer, like I see you writing for people. Amen. So I pray in Jesus' name that you will get the right connections um, and whatever you need to do, whether it's a blogger or whether it's writing songs, ghost writing books, uh, whatever it is. I pray that the hands will be anointed and blessed in Jesus name. I thank you for the prophetic grace that is on their life. I pray that you stir it up and that you begin to teach, train, activate them in the knowledge and the wisdom of the prophetic. And Father, I pray that the grace and the mercy of God, the wisdom of God, the counsel of the Lord, I see the counsel of the Lord uh, upon you. So think it not strange that if people ask you questions that you can give them wisdom. People trust you. People uh, know that they can come to you and ask you a particular question and you can give them answers. And the Lord said, because there is a counselor in you, the anointing to counsel is there. And so people will trust you with things and you'll be able to give them answers. You'll be able to listen to them. You'll be able to change ideas and, and cause their viewpoints to change because the anointing to counsel is upon you. And so, Father, I thank you for the wisdom of God of counseling. I thank you for the wisdom of God of increase. Everything that the that you have planned for, for your people, I decree and declare now a billion times over concerning their life and concerning their increase in Jesus' name. Amen. If you guys did not sow, um, you can you can sow now. And I'm asking you to sow because we have been decreeing over your finances and over every single type of seed that you sow that you will get it a billion times over, a million times over, a thousand times over. So you can sow any amount. It's not a specific amount. I'm not a money uh, preacher. Uh, when God tells me to do it, I do it. And typically he doesn't give me, uh, somebody else just put something up there for a prayer request. Typically he doesn't give me a specific amount. So I'm saying whatever you desire to sow, please sow um, and 
we are decreeing. Um, if you missed it, we have been we we took a, a nice uh, portion of time to decree a billion times over in man, uh, manifestations of your seeds, not just your financial seeds, but our, our every seed. When you pray for people, when you uh, encourage people, uh, so on and so on. Okay, when you be kind to people, we we begin to decree, and we're doing this for a whole solid month. Okay, so we got about three more weeks to declare this, and so. Um, we're declaring this every day, okay? So whether I'm on video or not, I am praying for every single person that when you sow, that you whatever seed, whatever type of seed you sow, that you will get it back a billion times over. Now, just because I said that, don't try to negate sowing finances because most of us, especially in COVID, need financial breakthroughs. So sow for what you want because watch this, whatever you sow is what you're going to get back. You're not going to sow money and get uh and, and get an apple tree <laughs> okay you don't they don't do that okay so um uh, i'm gonna pray again for those that are sowing it might it's not gonna be a longer it's not gonna be as long, as long as it was but i'm gonna pray as quickly as possible but officially as possible for those that are sowing for those that did so i'm gonna i'm gonna reiterate this prayer okay with decreeing over your life uh, once again okay so um, is, there's no more prayer requests before I do this. There's actually one. Okay. Um, there's William Dawkins. Okay, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for William. I thank you for this son. I thank you for his ministry, his wife, everything that you're doing. I release the grace and the power of God to apostolically pioneer. I decree and declare now that a billion times over shall come upon his life. In Jesus' name, his ministry, his new transition. And I pray, God, that the blessings and the favor shall be upon them. I break and destroy every level of reproach that will try to come. I pray, God, that every demonic force that tries to sift them as we, I go before them as a father and I cover him and I decree and declare now that no weapon formed against my son shall prosper and my daughter shall prosper. But all the tongue and all the tongues that's rising and trying to rise up against them, I condemn them. Hallelujah. And I declare and decree, God, in Jesus' name, that the blessings shall overflow. I decree that men and women shall come to that ministry and join a billion times over. I declare in Jesus' name that the favor of God shall rest upon that ministry a billion times over. I declare in Jesus' name that their name will be passed around in the wind, that everybody in Vero and the surrounding cities and areas will know about my son and his ministry. I declare and, and, and decree in Jesus' name that people that want to be be trained, equipped, delivered, healed, will run to this ministry because they will know that there's an authentic apostle there, is authentic prophet there, and that father that they can go there and be safe and get healed and delivered and be taught, trained, activated, and released by genuine apostolic prophetic team. And so, Father, I pray for every last leader in that house. I pray for every member uh, in that house, and I declare and decree that this apostolic grace shall come upon them, that they shall be triumphant, that they shall pioneer, that they shall be successful that nothing that they do shall fall to the ground in jesus name but i pray that you uphold them in the name of jesus christ i pray bread i pray blessings and favor i pray that the build the businesses around them shall sow money into them in jesus name i pray that they shall be government a uh, government a uh, governmental ministry in that region that the city will call upon them for wisdom the city will call upon them to help them to deal with those that are in the community i pray in jesus name for the favor for the voice, my God, of my son and my daughter, that their ministry, that their voice shall be heard all in this tribe, all in this uh, all in this territory and beyond. I thank you in Jesus' name that you're causing them to raise up strong sons and daughters. Hallelujah, prophets, apostles, pastors, teachers, and evangelists, that they shall begin to advance the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Bless them in Jesus' name. Give them wisdom. Give them witty ideas to bring the community. Give them witty ideas to keep and maintain sons and daughters in the kingdom. Give them witty ideas and inventions to expand the ministry in Jesus' name. And I thank you that you're going to bless them, that you're going to keep them, that you're going to continue to bless them in the name of Jesus' name. I bless my son. I bless my daughter. I bless their ministry in Jesus' name. And I, I speak a uh, billion, uh, billion, uh, bl billion blessings. Um, what is it? Over. Oh, okay. Billion yeah, times over. over. <laughs> Amen. All right. Who's next? Yeah. Mary, Mary Davies. Okay, Mary, God bless you, Mary. I pray in Jesus' name for the uh, strength and increase in 
Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for Mary. I pray for strength. I pray for increase. I pray, God, that as you use her, the strength of God will cause her to wax strong. Father, you said that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. So, Father, I pray that she is the they. And as she do what they are said to do, that you will cause that strength to mount up upon her. And I decree that the eagle in her, the prophet in her, the seer in her, shall mount up zebrando with power, with authority, with insight, with truth in Jesus' name. Father, whatever is wrestling with her, whatever wrestles with her, the times that it does wrestle with her, I decree and declare now that it shall not prosper with her in Jesus' name. And though, and though that she wrestled, they will not win. So I speak strength. I speak joy. I speak patience. I speak overcoming. The joy of the Lord is her strength. I impart joy and I also release that anointing to wait. So as she waits, she will renew her strength. But also, Father, in Jesus' name, as she walk in the joy of the Lord, her strength shall be renewed as well. And so, Father, I pray I bless her. I pray spiritual blessings and favor upon her life, uh, her ministry, her connections and her destiny in Jesus name. Amen. Strength and power and grace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, Donovan Parsons. Okay, Donovan, I pray for you in Jesus name. I declare and decree that the grace of God shall be upon your life. I pray in Jesus name that this is a season of breakthrough for you. I pray that this is a season of alignment in Jesus name. I hear you saying, God, what do I do? God, where do I go? Who do I connect to? Donovan, I hear you saying, where do I go? Who do, who am I? And where do I connect to? And the Spirit of the Lord said, this is the season where I'm going to cause you to connect. This is the time frame that I'm going to connect you with the people that I've called you to be with, your tribe, your tongue, your DNA. And the Spirit of the Lord said, as you have been trusting me, I've been building you. I've been uh, causing you to be able to start understanding who I am and, and in terms of relationship. And so the Spirit of the Lord said, this is the time where I'm going to highlight your tribe. I'm going to show you the sound. I'm going to show you the DNA. I'm going to allow you to connect with them. And so the Lord said, I heard your cry. I heard your desire and you shall know who you are. You shall walk in who you are. You shall be successful and triumphant, said the Spirit of the Lord. So I pray the favor of God upon you. I pray the insight of God to you. I pray that your eyes will be uh, enlightened, that you may be able to understand and comprehend God's plan and will and predestination for your life. And I pray grace and peace upon you, your family and your destiny in Jesus name. Again, the Spirit of the Lord says, be encouraged because this is the season where he'll show you what to do. He'll show you who you are and he'll show you where to connect to. And so I bless you. I cover you in Jesus name. Amen. And the last one is Tiffany. You mentioned us um, pray for me and guidance and ministry clarification in my office um, and that I stop running from my phone. Okay. Father, in Jesus name, I bless you for Tiffany Newman. That's my blood cousin. I pray, God, that you bless her and that you give her the favor and the grace uh, that you give her um, the strength to connect into what she's supposed to do in Jesus name. Father, I break fear. I break fear off of Tiffany in Jesus name. I break the fear. I break the inability to decide in Jesus name. I decree and declare now that you will not have a fear of the unknown. But you, but that you will be ready and willing to take the risk with God. So I declare and decree now that you shall shift with God, that you shall be okay, bold to do what God called you to do in Jesus' name. And so Tiffany, I hear the Lord say that it is coming the time where you have to make the decision, and that decision is where you're going to live. I hear God saying geographically, okay, your physical location. Is getting ready to change. It's getting ready to shift. And where God is going to connect you, Hallelujah! Some of the things that you're going to learn, some of the things that you're going to uh, that you want to that's going to manifest, uh, is going to be an unknown area. And so God wants to deal with the fear of the unknown. Of what's going to happen? Uh, am I going to be able to survive? Is this real? Uh, you know, am I am I really? moving in the spirit am i really doing it the way you told me to do it and the lord said i'm going to strengthen your faith i'm going to cause your faith to increase like never before i'm going to cause your faith to be renewed like never before and god said when i renew your faith you're going to be so on fire 
that you're going to literally just do everything like you, I mean, like with no issues, just like you breathing. And so I hear the spirit of the Lord saying your geographical location is getting ready to shift and change for the alignment and the purposing of your destiny. But the Lord says, continue to trust him, Tiffany, continue to move in the things of God. He also wants me to tell you that he's proud of you and that those things that you are doing now, he has smelled it. It is a sweet aroma to him. He's very proud of you. I hear the Lord say he's smiling upon you. He says, daughter, continue to pioneer, continue to push, continue to do what you know is right. I am with you. I have blessed you. My stamp of approval is upon you. And the Lord says, no, that those that I've called, I have also equipped. And the Lord said, I've equipped you and I've given you my spirit and you shall not fail. You shall be one that shall overtake, shall pursue, to recover all, for you shall be one that is known as a victor. You should be one that's known as a fighter, one that's known as an overcomer, one that's known as one that will bring the power and the authority of the Lord. For the Lord said, I've called you as a prophet of power. You are, you are a power prophet. And the Lord says, miracles, signs, and wonders shall follow you. Even your message shall bring people to their knees and repentance because I'm going to use you as a power prophet, as a power prophet. And the Lord says, even though my word says it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit. I need my people to understand that my spirit is power my spirit is might and when i come upon you you shall move in power and you shall move in might and so the lord said this day i am proud of you i am watching over you i'm smiling over you and i say to you be encouraged keep moving tiffany keep doing what i called you to do for i shall manifest out of you great signs wonders and miracles but right now, what I want to deal with first, says the Spirit of the Lord, is your fear of the unknown. And so, Father, I bless Tiffany. I pray, God, that the fear of the unknown is destroyed now in Jesus' name. I bless Tiffany. I pray, God, that she will hear and she will comprehend and that she will do. God, I pray boldness upon her life in Jesus' name. I pray for her family. I pray for her children. I pray for my little cousins that all of them are protected and they are guided and they are guarded. Hallelujah. Because she's a, a faithful, holy woman, but also because you are the Lord of their life. And so, Father, I pray for them. I bless them. And I speak uh, a billion times over blessings in every area of her life in Jesus' name. And also, Ernest Jesse. Ernest? Mm -hmm. Ernest? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for Ernest. In Jesus' name, I pray, God, that you will continue to bless him in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for unions and relationships to be strong in the name of Jesus Christ. I also pray for his prophetic ministry. I pray, God, that you will use him to prophesy like never before. I pray in Jesus' name that you will cause the music and the ministry of grace to be upon him like never before never before i stir up signs wonders and miracles in his life i pray god my god that you will cause him to be a powerful team with this significant other and that you will bless them with the favor and the wisdom of God. I pray, God, that you will use them to pioneer a generation, that you will cause them to raise up sons and daughters after your own heart, worshipers, hallelujah, after your own heart. In Jesus' name, I bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for favor and grace in the area and geographical location, uh, city and state that they are in. In Jesus' name, I pray for breakthrough in business. I pray for breakthrough in business. I pray for breakthrough breakthrough in business. I pray for breakthrough in business. My God, in Jesus' name, let the witty inventions be manifested and made known in the name of Jesus Christ. I cover them in Jesus' name. I pray blessings and billion times over blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I want to bless your people. I pray a billion times over blessing in their finances. I pray a billion times blessings over in their joy. In Jesus' name, I declare and decree now that we shall function and move with the joy of the Lord a billion times over. I declare the peace of God, the rest of God. I declare that everybody who is not sleeping well, you shall sleep well now a billion times over. For the Bible says that God gives us sweet peace and sweet rest. And I declare it upon your life, sweet rest and sweet peace a billion times over. I declare that fear is, is gone and driven out and now boldness is being uh, pre present and I declare in Jesus name that your boldness shall increase and wax strong a billion times over. I pray that breakthrough shall be your portion a billion times over. That relationship shall be mended and strengthened a billion times over. I pray that you will begin to know who you are a billion times over. I pray that you will be bold in who you are a billion times over. That you will accept and receive who you are a billion times over. That 
you will walk worthy of the vocation by which you've been called a billion times over. If you are an apostle, you will function as an apostle a billion times over. If you're a prophet, you will function as a prophet a billion times over. A teacher, you will function a billion times over. A pastor, you will function a billion times over. An evangelist, you will function a billion times over. A usher, you will function a billion times over. Hallelujah. A treasurer, a billion times over. Whatever you're doing, you will sow those seeds and get returned a billion times over. But every time you've interceded for a person, I prophesied that a billion times over, people will intercede for you. Hallelujah. Every person you help, I prophesied that a billion times over, people will come to help you. The Bible said, press down, shaking together. Hallelujah. Running over shall men give unto your bosom. And I pray that men shall rise from the north, the east, the south, and the west and give unto your bosom, not just finances. Hallelujah. But encouragement, not just encouragement, but prayer, not just prayer hallelujah uh, but 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 love not just love but kindness not just kindness but long suffer i pray that the seeds that you sow will come back to you a billion times over in jesus name i bless your house a billion times over i release the anointing upon your life a billion times over i activate and stir the word up a billion times over i stir up the activation uh, of the uh seeds that were sown to you today by the uh, uh impartation of the priest's word of god and prophecy and i declare and decree that you shall walk in the triumphant anointing always consistently being in triumph a billion times over i bless you i, I pray shalom upon your life if you need anything you can inbox us you can call us um i didn't mean to say that one but you can email us <laughs> um and we will get right back to you so you can follow us here on facebook you can follow us on youtube you can also follow us on twitter and you can follow us on twitch and it's under my name, Deron Ferguson, and or the House of David Global. All right. So I love you guys. I pray that you guys are blessed. All right. And so um, every time that you see us coming on, one of the major things that we're going to do every time we come on is we're going to pray billion times over in every area of your life, not just your finances, every area of your life. OK, so God bless you. I love you. Again, if you need us, inbox us. On any one of the social media um, sites or um, things here and, and we'll get to you as soon as possible I love you God bless you thank you again for spending your time with us Shalom <laughs>